Wow, I feel kind of rusty at this point, but uh, I'm going to actually talk about one of the beers I have picked up and share. I picked this up actually a few weeks ago, and I'm looking forward to actually trying this one. And this is going to be from Platform Beer Company. It is their Orange Martian. Let's see if we get a look coming here a little bit clearer for you guys. And this is a sour ale. Yeah, bring it up. And then it'll identify it. There we go. Sour ale, and it says with natural flavors. And on the can, slushy style sour with tangerine, banana, and vanilla flavor. Beer in the moment, it says on the bottom of the can. This is a nice 16 ounce pint can. And a lot of the times, the slushy beers I've had in the past have actually come from 450 North. So I'm looking forward to seeing how Platform did their beer here. This one comes in with an ABV of 8.5% as well. Which after the uh, 450 North debacle, so to speak, you have to wonder, is it really 8.5%? So hopefully it was all done correctly there. Uh, IBU on this one is actually 8. And as always... With the cans that are done by platform, they always do a good job of letting you know what's in it. You can see the different grains, the different hops, the yeast, and the adjuncts. You got that tangerine puri, you've got that banana puri, the vanilla flavor. Lacto is going to add a nice creamy base to it. You also got uh, the pale wheat, uh, pilsner, uh, melanoidin, curriculum, articulated for the grains, and crystal for the hops. And what is going on, Erie in the house over on Facebook and Vanessa in the house over on YouTube? What is going on? Happy Monday to you both. And hopefully, Erie, you're having a great time with you and Alan and the kids this week as you guys are out there traveling. And hopefully, your week is off to a good start as well, Vanessa. What's going on, Todd? Cheers, my friend. So, for those of you that might be tuning in that uh, had to see me do live before, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this beer. Maybe talk about a few other things and just kind of have a live beer chat since I haven't done a live beer chat in a while with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and crack this baby open. I may cut this down on another video for people that just want to see like the short beer reviews. I know a lot of people enjoy those as well. So let's go ahead and get cracking here on the Orange Martian. And as always, if you guys are drinking something, just let me know in the comments. A little bit left in the can there. A nice fruitiness coming out in the nose. Yeah, I bet on that drive here, I bet you guys are worn out some. I know Alan was last night, he was telling me he was ready to hit the bed. So, in actuality, with the light behind it, you get a brighter orange color than what's coming through there. Almost has like a sun kiss type look from like an orange soda. You get a nice head on there that's, uh, I guess you can call it eggshell white, about two and a half fingers or so. I'm getting a feel of the tangerine, and I am getting some of the banana in the background. Now, I'm not getting a lot of the sweetness that comes out, like when I have like some of the 450 North type beers, but it is definitely there. Get a little feel there in the nose of the lactose. It's got an interesting take to it. It's like a... Uh, A little bit of a tartness in there as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's stacking up nicely. So they say to drink it cold. I had it out for about 10 or 15 minutes before I started, but it came out of the cooler at 37 degrees. Still nice and cold in the glass. It goes down really smooth. If you missed it earlier, I said this one has an 8 IBU on it. So, you're not getting hit with any of that bitterness like that. You do have a slight bit of the tartness as well. You can feel that in a little bit of the cheek area. Usually it sits on the palate. You know, for this to be kind of a slushy style beer, and I know Todd, you being in the chat there. And us having, or if anybody else has had like the 450 North, 
it doesn't really stack up to what we would consider to kind of be a slushy style thing in that regard. So, in that point, it's underwhelming. As far as a sour ale, it's okay. It's decent. It's uh, nothing that really jumps out as much for me. You pick up some prickling from the carbonation in play. It's got a nice little mouthfeel to it. Banana, tangerine, and vanilla. They all sit nicely in the, in the cheek area of the mouth. You get a nice coat in. Bubbles dance a little bit and it goes right down on the back end with no problem. Check some of the comments here. Vanessa is drinking an iced tea. Nothing wrong with iced tea, especially on a warm night. And then Aries drinking a coffee. It would be a little too hot at nighttime for coffee. I don't know. I mean, I can drink coffee pretty much as well, like Erie, and go to bed afterwards. But usually if I drink it at night, it's like something like a, one of those Starbucks type things or something. Uh, Emerson, pour me a glass. Good sir. Welcome, Emerson. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's not a bad beer. Um, it's just... I'm looking at this versus 450 North, other half, other breweries that have done other slushies, and I feel like Platform still has a little bit of ways to go there. Um, they're just not there to that level with this type of style, in my opinion. And most of them come off like a Berliner Weiss is what they use for a lot of that. You don't really get a Berliner Weiss type feel off of this one. You do get some of that tartness, though, in the throat area as well. Letting you know it's a sour. Here you said the kid's making me want to drink vodka. <laughs> oh, Hans is drinking H2O, that good old water boy drink there. Uh, let me see. He said hello to Vanessa. He was drinking water as well. And everybody said hello. Everson's drinking a Bush Light. Hello. You know, I haven't had a Bush Light in years. I should do a review on Bush Light just to do it because I've done Miller Light, I think, on here. I know I've done Bud Light before, but I've never done Bush Light. I've done some of the Keystone type stuff. I've done some other things. So maybe one day I'll do a Bush Light as well. <laughs> uh, coffee eight's good at any time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, coffee is good at any time. I'm a big coffee fan. I have coffee and I have, you know, beer. And I'm happy for both of them. So ramen in the house. What is going on, brother? Cheers. Hope all is well on your end as well. So hopefully things are good there. I know uh, depending where you're at, we've got this whole Corona stuff. Some places, bars are shutting down. You can't buy a drink in some states, it seems. What is the world coming to at this point? When you got to stay in the house and two, you can't drink. And you know, some people that stay in the house, there's some people in the house that make you want to drink. So hopefully <laughs> if you're in that position, you're stocked up. <laughs> Uh, Ty said, yeah, it's hard to get the mouthfeel of a 450 North slushy. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've got it down to a science. And I would say with this one, too, with the 8.5% ABV, on the back end, you do get a little bit of a tinge of the alcohol as well. So you get a little bit more of an alcohol feel where, like, the 450 North is smooth. But then again, we know the whole ABV controversy over there as well. But... You know, it does seem like this may be closer to the 8.5% ABV they're saying. Ramen said, I drank a few last night, so I'm laying off the cold ones tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't drink anything yesterday. I had one on Saturday. Um, we had to eat some on Friday, but yeah, yesterday I kind of took a day off as well. You know, you got to moderation, right? Keep the body in balance, so you don't have to drink every day. Uh, Hans said, very crisp. Yeah, I mean, it's... Not as much crisp as refreshing. It's got a nice amount of presence to it that, you know, you have some beers that give that drying effect. And it's always silly when you say, well, this one is more wet than dry, but they're all wet because they're all liquid. But this one has more of that refreshing feel to it where you got that nice, um, if you were like on a beach type set or sitting poolside or doing something outside and the heat, you want that thirst quenching type beer, then that's what this one actually brings to you. A black label review. My uncles love the stuff. I haven't heard black label in a long time. That's an OG, OG, old school one right there. I will say again, 
if you're a not a strong sours fan i don't know if this one would turn you off too much because i will say the tartness is tuned down a little bit on this one so it's not as heavily tarted as some of the other ones but it is definitely there bums in the house cheers and effective tomorrow no more on-site alcohol consumption in pittsburgh bars so wow so in pennsylvania and pittsburgh now you guys don't have it there either where your bars are closing it's fine today i think it was in kentucky our bars were reopening on stuff so depending where you're at i saw you know texas florida uh california was just added to, they're closing down some of their bars as well arizona i believe is closing down some of their bars and this was the whole problem if people tried to go too early you know you have something like this happen they're going to shut stuff down again so that is uh that's tough there so uh you know, hopefully it's not as long as it was previously, and hopefully they can uh, get through this period. I know it's been tough on a lot of the workers, which I just uploaded the one video uh, earlier, well, I guess last week now, because it's Monday, on the All Together, and I've seen some other people actually getting those around the area. That's the uh, other half initiative that some of the breweries I got on to help support the hospitality industry, and uh, pretty decent one. So if you do get the All Together, um, that does help out some of the workers or supposed to go to some of the workers, however they have it, however much out of each beer that's bought or however they set that up. Um, Rama says, since platform is the subject of the video, have you tried the Sun Surfer? Holy cow, it, is it ever crushable? I have not had that one yet. You know, platform is one that I don't get kind of as much as I used to. Um, part of it being... We just got so many other good local independent breweries doing stuff. The other part being, now that they're kind of under the AB and Bev umbrella, they're kind of fall to my second tier of choices, so to speak. You know, I like to get the independent ones, and then before I go to those, even some of the stuff like Lagunitas, I'll usually get them every few weeks or so. I'll grab something from them um, to check out, but usually it's a lot of the smaller local ones or the regional ones that I try to put the dollars to as much as I can. But uh, Platform, we have one of their tap rooms here in Cincinnati, which I need to get over there as well. But I can't go anywhere because it was closed down. And then it's a matter of going there. They did reopen some of our tap rooms, but it's then sitting there with other people. You don't know. It's still not the best environment, a lot of stuff. So I'm kind of laying low off of that. But uh, no, I'll have to keep an eye out for that one in case I come across that as well. And I like some of the beers the Platform has done. I felt, though... The ones I have had, and I don't think the acquisition really affected as much, but I feel like some of the ones I've tasted since then haven't been as strong as what they were previous to that. And that could be just my mind playing tricks on me. Shout out to the ghetto boys. But it could be just something like that that is, I feel like they've kind of taken a step back or you become a thing where you're trying to make out more for the masses than how you were kind of focusing on crafting the story you wanted to tell. So could just be me being delirious as well. Shout out to Monica. What is going on? Cheers. Good to see you, my friend. Hopefully all is well. Hopefully you're having a great Monday night. Shout out to Lep in the house. What is going on? Cheers, brother. Y'all check out Lep TV, Leprechaun TV. I missed your uh, your cooking this past weekend. I just didn't have time to, to get caught up and catch your video and stuff. I have to go back and watch the replay here at some point. Uh, Vanessa says it will be like this for the foreseeable future. Very much it could be. I mean... Depending where you're at, again, so, like, where I'm at in Kentucky, we're actually one of the states that has been, I think we have been steady, we might be slightly increased, or so we're right on that line, but Ohio, they started increasing, so Ohio may start cutting some stuff off. If you're, like, in New York or New Jersey, I think they were kind of steady. There was one state on the East Coast that was actually declining still. And I want to say it was like Vermont or New Hampshire, one of the ones up there. Vanessa, you probably know since you're up around that area. Um, but I think last count, like 32 or 33 were now increasing again. So we're going to see what happens with all of that. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Eh, beer looking full. Yeah, I'm going to do something with this beard at some point. I just haven't figured out. I need to either trim it or take it off and go back to the goatee or, or do what, you know, start... Start walking around having kids tugging your shirt asking Santa Claus, Santa Claus questions or something. So I need to do something with it at some point. <laughs> and Blake's in the house. What is going on, brothers? Says, cheers, everyone. And uh, Monica asked how uh, Monica was doing as well. 
and uh, Blake, another great one to check out. And uh, I don't know, Blake, if you're doing your thing tomorrow, since I know Alan's traveling, but I don't know if you guys are trying to do the B&A or you kind of moved it down because of uh, him being out. But uh, make sure you all check out Blake TV as well. Make sure you check out all these channels, all these good people, all these good people that are in here. <laughs> Jefferson Drunk Santa, perfect year for it, right? If there was a year to be a Drunk Santa or Billy Bob Thornton style, 2020 would be the year. And that's kind of the Santa we probably all deserve this year, is the Billy Bob Thornton bad Santa, right? With everything that's definitely taking place. <laughs> I still love that movie. I still like... In my mind, when I'm like, even though it's not Christmas, when I'm like on a break and like people try to contact me, I'm like him just sitting there trying to eat his meal in the mall and the people coming up bothering him. I'm like, I'm on my lunch break, lady. You know, that's how I feel sometimes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, make sure you check out some of the people in here as well and stuff they're actually doing. And uh, Lep does a lot of stuff. If you're a cooking fan and you like to see people get down and cook, Lep does a lot of stuff on the Blackstone Grill amazing stuff that he puts together i mean it's like watching diner driving and dives you would get hungry watching what lep does out there on the grill so he usually does it on saturday nights but i think you've been doing some other things as well so leprechaun tv make sure you uh definitely check him out on that tip uh let me see uh rose amen just dropped in to say hi got to spend some time with the family there you go get that quality time in with the family for sure Definitely appreciate you being here. It's been a while, so hopefully uh, you'll drop in some more or check out some of the videos and stuff. Been uploading uh, on the channel. And keep me posted. You see some beers out there you want me to check out, definitely let me know, my friend. Um, I'm always on the hunt for different things, and if you guys are finding some good stuff, let me know so I can go ahead and get some of the uh, reviews on those as well. Uh, we'll be on tomorrow if you have one. Sorry, sent my other message is too late. Cheers, everyone. All right, yeah, I may do it some more. I'm... I was debating last week, I tell you, with YouTube, the last couple weeks I've been kind of in and out with it, and I'm trying not to get into that burnout phase, and it was kind of like, so I've done some uploads, stuff like that, and everything, but I'm trying to get back into it and get back on the game, so I think I am going to do some more lives, I was talking about last week, and people said they wanted me to do some more live shows, so I am planning to do some more, um, as far as I know, this, thur this uh, Thursday we'll still be having the Beer Flow show, which is the observed holidays and a Friday, so that could be a fun thing to do. Um, and then uh, try to get some more of these type of things in there as well. Uh, do, 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 do. Lep says, all good, bro. Never hold anything against anything. We are creators, so it's hard to support everyone. It is, right? It's between having to work your regular day job, right? Because none of us are PewDiePie or whatever, so you got to work your day job. And then you do the stuff to create for your channel, and then you're trying to show support and building the community because people forget sometimes YouTube is a social network. So we should all be involved in helping each other out and, and checking out things. I watched one of uh, Craig's videos earlier today, Kent Beer Reviews. If you haven't checked him out, he does some great reviews from over there in the UK. Make sure you check him out. Um, and it was kind of like, I haven't got a chance to rewatch one of his videos in a while. So we're all trying to get in here and do the different things that we can do. And so uh, patience is also a key. Uh, Monica said to Blake, she was okay, been a while, try to come and say hello soon. Definitely, uh, let it grow, right? Uh, hey, what's going on, Mont Muser Whiskey Reviews? Good to see you, my friend. Cheers to you. How are you doing this Monday evening? And there's another one for a whiskey channel. If you're big into whiskey or you want to find out about whiskey, make sure you check out Mont Muser as well. Mont Muser does some great stuff, um, talking about some different whiskeys. And uh, I think you'll definitely like that. Hashtag beer game. <laughs> uh, you can sell the hair. You can make a sweater or something. I probably could, right? <laughs> what's the, what's the, how do you sell hair? You sell by the ounce? It's like selling weed or something. How do you sell hair out there? Uh, Malt says he will check out Left's channel for sure. Love me some good kicking, cooking vids. Yeah, check out Malt. I mean, uh, check out uh, Lep. Lep does a Saturday night. He does some stuff himself. He also does does some stuff with Shane and off of his cooking channel. Uh, Never trust a skinny chef, Shane. So both of them together, it's just boom. It's like it explodes with the food and stuff they're doing. Uh, yeah, Todd just actually picked up Lep, so there you go. I uh, said so thanks, Mon. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go live to get the raw footage kind of cooked. There you go. Uh, thanks, Todd. Hey, Angela is in the house. What is going on, Yarning? How are you, my friend? Good to see you. Hashtag networking. It's all about networking. That's how you connect, right? You got to get out there and network. 
Uh, Simon's in the house. Hey, what's going on, Simon? It's been a little bit of time. Cheers, my friend. Great cooking in Connecticut. He's posting less because his restaurant is Corona. <laughs> That's not good, though. What is going on? Heritage Farms, Texas. Cheers. Good to see you. Hello, everyone. How could I not stop in when I heard beer, right? Welcome. And it's, I think it's the first time I've actually seen you here, too. So hopefully you uh, come in and visit some more and you, uh, you know, pop that red button so that you can uh, catch all the videos when they come out. And I will definitely uh, look to check you out as well down there. Hopefully you're doing good in Texas. I know you guys are one of the states there we were just talking about. We're kind of shutting some things down around there, um, including the bars, including the bars. I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, you got to keep people safe and everything, but, you know, hopefully people are stocked. You guys know I keep a big beer cellar, and I got some whiskeys and all that stuff here, but some people like to go to the bar and socialize. It's, it's tough, and then they can't go to the bar. They got to be at home with some of the people they don't want to be at home with, possibly. And it could be just, you know, not as fun. <laughs> no problem. I thought I was a subscriber already, but wasn't. So, top picking up loud. Sometimes you got to watch YouTube because they screw up your stuff sometimes with subs. Uh, Maud also subbed the left, so very nice to check out stuff. There you go. Nice connections there. And I know uh, left will check you out as well, Maud. Uh, Ty said, Blake, how are you? Ty, another day of being as cool as you, bro. <laughs> Blake's always got the snappy comebacks in there. We're trying to. And uh, how are you, Miss Shannon? LOL, you need to shoot higher, Todd said. <laughs> we all got to know our limits, our levels, so to speak. Doing good. Glad I caught you live. Well, excellent, excellent. Yeah, I just, uh, I decided to go live. I was actually going to go over on, on Bumpy's channel tonight, but they were doing a thing on doubles. And I went to the store Saturday, and the one store I went to didn't have any of the doubles there. So I didn't end up picking up one. So I said, well, I told him no, I wasn't going to make his show. And I decided, why not just throw up something here tonight and uh, chat with everybody, see how you guys are all doing out there. Uh, Todd said they're doing good. Looking forward to it. New follower. Things are crazy here. Yeah, things are. My, uh, my mother-in-law is actually down in Texas as well. So um, she's in the Dallas area with um, her husband and our nephews down there. But it's kind of like... Yeah, it's, you know, we hear about the stuff happening down there as well. And uh, we were looking to try to get together with them in a couple months. But it's kind of like, don't know if we can because things are kind of crazy. Like, like you might think you can go out there and maybe you'll pick it up. Or whatever, but it's like, you may pick it up and be okay. But then what if you pass it to grandma or something? Like, nobody wants to pass that to grandma, you know. So, you got to be careful. The other ones that might be around you, that could be in a worse position. Uh, Simon says, I wish I was in Texas. Virginia is so bad. What's wrong with Virginia right now? <laughs> Virginia's got a lot of fun stuff to do there. Usually, isn't Virginia for lovers? Isn't that your slogan there? Virginia's for lovers? Gotta get some loving going. Mick loving. Hey, what's going on? Bourbon Bounty's in the house. What is happening, my friend? Uh, I said, hey man, jumping in for your stream night. Appreciate that. And y'all check out Bourbon Bounty. Um, another one. Whiskey. He does different ones, but Bourbon, obviously, is in his title. He kind of has a key focus in that as well. Um, if you're looking to learn more about Bourbon, like, I like to check it out because I am in the Bourbon state of Kentucky. But he provides some neat stuff. And just recently, dude, your uh, your 3D vision you're using is pretty interesting. So I kind of like the 3D cam you got going on there as well. But great guy, great knowledge. You would know Bourbon. You definitely would check out Bourbon Bounty. Oh, Simon said he had to stay inside. Yeah, but it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, there's some places where, you know, we can go out here, but I guess if you, if everything's closed off, I guess that would really suck. I didn't know Virginia was as bad where you have to pretty much mandate to stay inside, like, unless you have to go to maybe the doctor or the grocery store or gas, something of an emergency. I have to check with my sister. She's actually down in Virginia. She hasn't really told me anything about that taking place. Uh, kick-ass time hanging with y'all. You too, my friend. Always a kick-ass time with Lep. At some point, I gotta get up to Northern Ohio or something so we can hang out and do some stuff. Uh, Lep is the chefion. There you go. I like that. I like that. Uh, Monica says hi to Bourbon. Hi low to Monica. Hit that bell at Malt. Nice. Uh, Bourbon to Blake, how you doing? John Womack's in the house. What is going on, John? Cheers, my friend. Good to see you. Uh, Lep to Todd, do you upload content? It's funny you asked that question, Lep, right? Because we've been telling Todd for like three or four years he needs to start a channel. But he just hasn't done it yet. And I think Shannon definitely needs a channel. 
It could be the Todd and Shannon show, or Shannon might just be solo at some point, because I think her... Actually, if we get Shannon and Erie on a show together, that would just blow up YouTube for sure. But yeah, we've been telling Todd to get a show together and do something at some point, but uh, maybe one day. He might be like the Beer Patrol on Joe. It just may take him a little bit more pushing. Uh, Ma says, cheers for the sub back to left. Nice. Hey, Mary, what is going on? Good to see you. Says hello to everyone coming in as well. Hopefully you're having a great Monday. Uh, let's see. Ma says, hey, to Bourbon. Hey, Ma, Whiskey, good to see you here. Uh, Lep says hello to Mary. Reviews. You too, at Bourbon. I hope all is well around your parts. And, well, not yet, but thought of doing some cooking stuff. Yeah, you've been thinking about doing some cooking stuff for a while, Todd. Come on, Todd. <laughs> Uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm really busy at work, so scarce on the streams during the week. But other than that, all is very well. I can understand that. Well, work does uh, work has to come to pay the bills, right? So you got to do that, and then kind of put everything after it. And then of course you got to spend time with the family and stuff too. You got the quality time in there. So things do get a little crazy. It's not as easy as I think some people think it is to try to do a YouTube channel. There is a lot of work, and as you guys know that have the YouTube channels, it takes a while, right? It's definitely some elbow grease you gotta lay down to build your channel up to where you want it to get to. So it's not a, like a walk in the park, like you do one thing and it's gonna be, you know, automatically awesome. Although some people have had that luck before. Oh, uh, you know, I will watch Todd Lep said, Todd said he did make some jerky on the smoker the other day. Yeah, and he actually had some on the uh, Beer Flow show and I was like, you need to make a channel so you can make the jerky. And he's had people ask him about making stuff so they can see how he does it, too. So, Todd's already got fans. He's already got a channel. He's already got subs out there. Bill Smills work by the bourbon. Well, <laughs> that kind of falls into it as well. <laughs> it's funny. I went this last uh, weekend. I did the upload of the beer video of, of the beer purchase, and I did the beer haul. And I didn't have it in a box, but I actually got my wife. She wanted some gin. I was like, you don't really drink gin like why gin and she was feeling she wanted to have some gin so she was like just get me a bottle of tangeray when you come when you come back so she was doing tequila for a little bit of time i think she got kind of bored with that so now she's going ahead and trying that which i do like gin but the last gin i think i had was a seagram's extra dry so that was definitely back in the day oh, what smoker do you have todd lep said Hey, what's going on, D&D &D and Deadlifts? Hi, right, cheers, my friend. Good to see you. And Lep says, I've been uh, the game for years ever since Honeys was wearing six. <laughs> Say six, I hear you. <laughs> uh, Camp Chef wanting to get a griddle, too, Todd said. Uh, one brother had Traeger, one had Oklahoma Joe. Both happy. What is your smoker? And are you happy? I'm shopping. Oh, there you go. Simon's out there looking for a smoker, too. I was thinking about... Uh, getting a grill back or a smoker but left's got me thinking about that blackstone now i'm just debating if i want to get something because i got rid of our grill a couple years ago and uh i kind of do miss it out there doing stuff uh thank you monica so let's show rider support and hit that like button y'all appreciate that as always uh rain is in the house let me see here the, he says the race war is just around the corner soon there will be you no know, color guys black Mexican center live it up bro <laughs> well, i don't know if that's going to be the case but it's kind of crazy right now with some of the stuff we're seeing. There's a lot of just crazy people that aren't really held together very well. They're just some... I'm trying to think of the right word for it. It's just... Some people are just off their rocker out there. It's crazy. I had gin once. Tasted like pine saw. <laughs> I had gin once. It tasted like pine saw. <laughs> it's funny. Um... Well, there's different types of gin, just like beer, right? Whiskey, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I do like, um, like I said, some gin. Like if I make a martini, which I used to make when I used to bartend, I prefer gin in the martini as well. So uh, I like it, but I have the cheaper model. I wish I would have gotten a higher one, talking about the uh, smoker there from Todd. Um, hey, what's going on? In from the grill. Good to see you. Nice to have you join on. Says in from Canada. Cheers, and hopefully you're doing well up there. It says Lep Boom. Uh, bourbon has a Traeger. Fantastic, but it sort of takes the manliness out of smoking. You don't get to chunk logs on the box and turn up the temp. It's just set it and forget it. Well, you know, as you're getting a little older, that set it and forget it comes in nice. 
uh, lap TV Weber kettle and Blackstone is a must. So here's a something for you grilling guys out there. And I don't know if I asked this of you guys before, but, but do you guys all prefer charcoal or do some of you guys like gas? Is there a preference you guys have? See, I, I like gas because it's quicker. I don't like to wait for the charcoal, but I know a lot of people that really grill prefer charcoal. So kind of curious what you guys are thinking out there. Simon said the bourbon, it is high on my list. Uh, Scott Boom, it is only going to get worse even after COVID is over. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of people coming around. I think depending what happens in November, there could be a change and that might temper some things, but not that either side has the best candidate up there. It's just, it may temper some things. I don't know. It's There's some ugly things that I've seen this past week and it's kind of like, you know, a few years ago, and Ty can attest to this, I talked about I just wanted a beer island. I just wanted an island away from everybody with beer. A few people that can come on that are cool people. Anybody starts any shit, you put them in a boat and you just push them off the island. Every year, it seems to grow how many people want to come to the island now. So <laughs> I just need to find the land for it. Canada did offer an island at one point for people that wanted to leave the States to get away. But I don't know if that offer is still in play right now. And it does get cold in Canada, too. Uh... Camp Chef has a grill, griddle model I want, but they are sold out everywhere. I guess Father's Day wiped them out. You might have got some, they might have been some good deals taking place too because sales were down with everything happening. So they might have got wiped out over that time. Uh, Hans said, how's the bartending life like? Well, it was back when I was in the 90s when I was bartending, but it was, it was a great fun job. Um, if you got like a social set, you know, you got to be, I think to really excel, you got to be like an extrovert because you're talking to people all the time. You're having fun. You're doing different things like that. Um, but for me, I, I had a blast doing it for a few years. I actually did that there. Um, we were actually bartenders at our alumni association in college, but we would do like comedy clubs and all kinds of things for the students and stuff. So, you know, it wasn't just making Manhattans and, um, you know, vodka tonics like that. We were making like sex on the beaches, Lindsberg lemonades, Long Island iced teas, all kinds of different things um, during the course of the time, and uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Definitely have your people skills. You need to have that to succeed as a bartender. And, you know, Swamby's not on here in Malta, Montreal, but he bartends, and he would tell you, you know, you got to definitely be able to work the room kind of as well. And that helps your tips. <laughs> Uh, let me see for sure. Thanks for the welcome. Yeah, definitely in for the grill. Hopefully you uh, hang out for a bit or you join, subscribe, hit that red button there, you know, and, uh, you know, we like to have fun on the channel and talk about beers. I upload the different beer reviews, but I do like the live chats here. Thursday nights we do the beer flow show where we never know where that's going to end up. But we start out drinking beers and talking about beer and then we just go from there. Uh, the flavor is fantastic. Uh, Bourbon said to Simon. Um, and Todd has a Weber kettle as well. Uh, Hans prefers uh, charcoal. Uh, and for the grill, I like charcoal for low and slow. If I'm in a hurry, I'll throw the gas burner on and throw some burgers on it. Okay. And Bourbon said, depends on what I'm cooking, but I don't use propane, no flavor. But if you don't use, like, the propane, isn't there stuff you can add into the fire now, like the wood chips and all that kind of stuff, and still use propane um, as well? Charcoal for flavor, but gas is quicker uh, cook for sure. Uh, Simon said, I have gas and love it. I am looking for second option smoke and third option charcoal. Not in order of just uh, filling up my backyard. <laughs> I like the ones that are like the combo sets, like the grill and the smoker together. Those ones seem like they'd be pretty cool to actually have. Um, let me see. I'm cool myself. Inside that I don't have to worry about masculinity <laughs> when it comes to a pellet smoker versus a stick burner versus any other kind of smoker. There you go. Lep's a man and he's okay. So he's in good shape. Uh, and for the grill, charcoal is the way to go to get the real good taste. It also depends on what kind of wood you're smoking uh, with the grill as well. Y'all are more than welcome. My doors are always open. Yeah, definitely in for the grill. You know, if you guys want to check him out, you know, another another cooker as well. So it's always good to, I'm always looking to learn about some of the food stuff. And at some point, I want to get together with some of you food guys and do like maybe a parent show as well, like a collaboration. So if you guys are up for that, let me know. And we can definitely get something coordinated there. I've been saying it for a bit of time, but just haven't gotten around to us actually putting something together. I have charcoal pellets that wouldn't tell the difference. Okay. Uh, 
Simon said the lab going to look into a Weber and Blackstone was great as I can go back to the chat later. Thanks so much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Lev, I've seen those and wondered about the charcoal pellets. You like them. Um, Bur uh, Bounty said I cooked two turkeys on a Traeger for my employees last Christmas, pre-Christmas office party. Now over half my employees have a Traeger. Well, nice. Well, there's marketing. Traeger should send you a grill, my friend. He should send you a grill for coming through with that. Lep says, welcome, Simon. And the yep, Lep said, yes, to Todd. Okay, cool. I, I'll have to get them. <laughs> Simon said, Rod, came here for the beer convo, but I've learned so much about cooking. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's the whole thing about the channel. What I like is to have everything flow and however it goes. So, you know, we start about beer. We talk about beer. Like I mentioned early, you know, when you get here, there's a part. We're going to talk about this beer, but then we're going to have a chat afterwards. And, you know, we'll go where the conversation heads this. And I'll probably come back later and I may do a video where I just cut it down on the beer part for people that just want to see that. But I'm always loving conversation. I love also finding out about some of the food type stuff. I'm not a huge foodie, so to speak, although I do enjoy food, of course. I'm not a little guy. But like dinner, driving, and dives, I watch that. I got a lot of friends around here that are foodies. And they get a little, sometimes they get a little too more fancy of what I'm looking for. But I love to hear about like the different recipes, the different grilling. All that kind of stuff because I'm always thinking about different ways to cook. It's kind of like I've brewed beer before. If you brew beer, chances are you also like to cook food. There's like some type of relationship in there as well. So I'm all about having those conversations. Uh, Monica says her brother in law has a Traeger and she loves the way everything tastes that is cooked on it. Traeger getting a lot of props in here tonight. Traeger, gotta mark them down on the list. Uh, you can still bang out some pretty good ribs using the indirect method. On a gas grill with a smoker box, okay. Uh, let me see. No, that's all we do: eat food and walk around in circles, drink beer, and so-called love each other. And yet, the whole world is a piece of shit. Yeah, if everybody just drank beer and, and ate some good food, maybe we'd be a lot better. But maybe too many people aren't getting that kind of lifestyle. We need to take it to the masses. Tune is in the house. What is going on, brother? Good to see you, my friends. I have a gas right now, but that's. Probably from dinner. Well, probably so, Tunis. Probably so. Uh, unless I can't afford a Traeger, LL. Well, Lep, you should be, you all monetized. Gotta get you some more people in your channel so YouTube can send you a check for a Traeger. Or maybe we can get Traeger to send you a Traeger. Uh, Hans, I used to work at a propane place. Charcoal is better. Propane gives you food chemicals. Yeah. The only person I've ever seen really endorse propane as much has been Hank Hill. <laughs> Hank Hill loves propane and propane accessories. Uh, drinking Lone Pine OJ, a great session beer. I haven't heard of that one. What is it like? Uh, four and a half percent there, raining. Tom either said me either left. That's the cheaper cam chef. LOL. <laughs> um, in for the grill, you have a channel. What is it? Well, it should be in for the grill. It should be the name of the channel as well. And again, one of the worst things YouTube did recently was taking away the ability to click the dots and go right to a person's channel so you can subscribe. It's made no sense for them to get rid of that. It kind of suck in that regard. Richie Z in the house. What is going on, Richie? Cheers, my friend. Good to see you. Hopefully you're having a great Monday night. Great to have you aboard. Uh, Tuna says, why not just light a wood fire and cook dinner? Uh, why you have to use stuff that you buy from someone else? Well, <laughs> it's always an alternative, right? So, Tunis, did you go camping this past weekend as well? I know you've been camping lately, too. Uh, Lep is the, tea, the guy to talk to. He's more in tune, has his finger on the pulse. I've been out of the scene for a little bit. I have a couple of cooking videos, but I've been uploading my music. Nice. So, what kind of music are you uploading there as well uh, in for the grill? Uh, Todd said, what's up, Richie? Leprechaun says, you can do a brisket and ribs on a blackstone also in for the grill. Uh, Rich said, cheers to Todd, and for the girl Simon, appreciate the interest, brothers, cheers, yeah. Uh, oh, yes, you can, Lep. Uh, Tunis, oops, uh, slid down too far, too far. Um, uh, do, 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 do. We're gonna have Tunis at here, I thought Tunis was the last one. Um, but I had Simon said, totally agree, but Virginia Wood has a lot of bad wood for direct grilling. If I was in Texas, would have a lot of direct, a lot for direct. Okay. Uh, and then Bounty, all right, in for the grill. You got me. I sub. Well, there you go. That's what it's all about. Connect, people. Connect. Uh, Ma 
says uh, the little Eric. Jeremy's in the house. Says, Cheers, Roger. What is going on, Jeremy Vincent? In the house. Do you guys want to see a bad guitar player? And also a guy that really likes beer. Y'all need to check out Jeremy V. He plays some good stuff on his guitar on his channel, and he knows beer. Great guy. He's over there usually on a Friday night throwdown with myself over on Blake TV's channel with uh, the Eclectic Beard and Blake. And uh, make sure y'all check him out as well. Uh, and for the grill, Simon just stopped by your channel. Oh hell yeah, man, nice. And now we got another. We got another guy that likes to make a little bit of food in the house. We got Cuff and Stuff Barbecue. What is going on, brother? Good to see you. Another great channel. You guys like cooking? Check out Cuff and Stuff Barbecue. He does some good stuff out there grilling as well. And he'll definitely lay down some stuff that you'll be wanting to try at home as well. And your, uh, your grill, whether it's the Blackstone or whether it's the Smoker or whether it's this or whether that, whatever it may be, Cuff and Stuff's got you covered. Uh, in for the Grill just subbed. Uh, what's going on, James? Rampant Lion Reviews in the house. Good evening. Insomnia kicking in again. So I thought I'd watch my favorite beer too, Big Sexy. <laughs> what's going on, brother? James is actually overseas, so if you get a chance, Rampant Lion Reviews now. You know, I do the beer reviews on the channel here, but if you want someone that can also give you a breakdown and a nice little story and a little bit of history around the beer, y'all should check out Rampant Lion Reviews. He does a good job on his as well when he breaks down some of the stuff. So great to see you, brother. Uh, Bourbon Bound, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Scott is, in, is also in for the grill, y'all. Uh, thanks, Todd. Thanks, Lev. Everybody thanking each other. That's what it's all about. That's how we all get together. Maybe all of us should just go to Congress and solve the problems of the country because I think we can all get it done over some beers and good food. Um, Lev says, I wish need those watch hours, brother Roger. Yeah, the watch hours, you know, when I got remonetized after YouTube changed it last time, it was like I had all the subscribers and the stuff was growing, didn't have the watch time. And... That's one of the reasons I started doing more of the lives and stuff like that. If you can do more of the lives, that's what gets the watch time going. But I know it's hard when you're doing all the different cooking. But um, CJ from, uh, I think it's CJ's cooking, his channel, one of the things he talked about when he made it over to the next hump, he did everything pretty much live. And that's what helped him. So the more lives you get, the more the watch time can actually work for you. We got Smoking Ninja in the house. What is going on, Smoking Ninja? Or as I call him, Little Seth Rogan. Good to see you, my friend. Another good uh, person to check out there. And uh, great to have you. I didn't make it onto the uh, show with Bumpy earlier just because I didn't pick up a double. So I'm kind of like, I don't have the, the right beer. So just came over here and cracked a beer open and talked about that for a little bit. Uh, if you search for In The Grill and filter for channel, it will come up. Yeah, that's usually the best way to do, put the filter for the channel. In For The Grill and Leprechaun, thankfully YouTube search found you and I sub. Thanks, there you go, nice. Monica said you can get the go to channel option back via Google Apps. The info is out there. Oh, good tip, Monica. Good tip. So Monica said go to channel option back in Google Apps. So you can check that out there uh, to remember to do that as well. Lots of cover stuff lately. I really like Everlast. Everlast is, you know, he's Everlast is one of those unique performers. So one of the other channels I run, which I got to do some updates on, is the. Uh, uh, Rod J Hip Hop Chronicles goes back in the day to so DJ and do different stuff like that. But you know, Everlast had that time where he had Everlast, and then he was later House of Pain, of course. Then he broke off where he did his solo albums, kind of doing the uh, I would say like it's kind of more of the soft rock, like the Whitey Sings of Blues type thing. But he's got a lot of talent, he just has a lot of talent. So uh, I'm a fan of Everlast for sure. Left said JV. Uh, ran 8.1% session beer double IPA. Well, there you go. <laughs> I can session to 8.1. A lot of people can't, but I can do that. Uh, Jeremy said, cool, Monica. Uh, Chad is lit, Blake. Well, thank you, my friend. Uh, Simon says, Rod, I found you via Ronald in LA, and I'm excited because you do a great live chat. Well, thanks, Simon. I appreciate that, my friend. And all about having a little bit of fun. And... Uh, just getting on here and having a good time, getting away from not thinking about some of the shit happening in the world at this point. Uh, smash that like, Blake said, and then Monica said hello to Jeremy V. Uh, in for the grill, just uploaded an original song I'm working on Inspired by being a father. I love my daughters there in the world. Oh, that's awesome. Let me uh, let me do this real quick if you guys give me a second. I'm going to actually make sure I remember to get in for the grill as well on here. 
got like four screens going on my computer. My one screen on the computer got like four different tabs on the bottom. My work computer, I have two screens that I actually use, which is kind of nice because you can uh, multi thing. At one point, I had three computer screens I used to use when I had a laptop connected with work. And you think at a point it would get kind of crazy, but you actually get to it understanding it and working it rather easily. So I kind of miss not having three screens actually going right now. It was uh, a nice, nice little talent or a nice little opportunity to do it that way. There we go. You know what I did? I had you in for the grill already, but for some reason I didn't have the bell rung, so I just rang the bell. I don't know why I didn't ring the bell, but there it is. And in for the grill has 637 subs, so if you haven't checked him out, <coughs> try to check him out. Maybe we can get him close to 650 or so there. People haven't uh, connected with you yet. Try to get you bumped up a little bit. Um, that's he Cuff is it? Yeah, Cuff and Stuff's in the house. Left, he's here as well. So if you guys haven't checked out Cuff and Stuff, make sure you check him out too. Like I said, there's a connection between the cooking and the beer guys. That's all I'm saying. There's some type of connection there. Uh, Smoking Nips that Blake, you following me? <laughs> in for the grill, Blake said, cheers, brother. Thanks so much, my friend Jer uh, Jeremy. said, yeah, definitely. It's, Jeremy, you, you just rock it out every time you're on there doing stuff. So appreciate you, my friend. Um... Did I see Cuff and stuff? Yeah, well, I read that. Oh, we got Redbeard in the house out of the great yonder over in Canada. What is going on, Redbeard? If you guys haven't checked out Redbeard, Redbeard may be the most animated beer reviewer that we all know on any of the channels from anywhere. So great time on his stuff. So if you haven't checked out Redbeard, you can check him out. And it's the beard with the, uh, like, beer, B-E-E-R-D. Um, he's up there in Canada, does some of the beer stuff there. Also does gaming on his channel. And this, uh, sometimes they play games. Like I know he did a video game, he did a golf thing. I think you guys were doing a card game the other night too. So great channel to check out there. Uh, if anything, you would definitely be entertained for sure. Uh, Simon said followed Amen as well. Uh, Bourbon said Blake the chat is lit. That's what's happening when you're at school with Rock Chat. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy here. You know, I'm just facilitating. It's all you. It's all you guys. I'm just here having a good time. I'm glad you guys wanted to hang out with me tonight because Monday was not looking all that great. It was kind of like there's not really anything on TV. Everything is pretty much reruns. Although I do watch my American Pickers on Monday night usually. I guess I am getting old, but I do like that show. I like seeing, you know what it is? They find deals. And anybody that knows me that's seen any of my beer videos, I find deals on beer. So I'm all about watching the deal type shows. That's got to be the attraction there. Blake says, cheers, homie, to bourbon. Richie says, hey, to Jeremy. Blake to Cuff and stuff. Blake says, uh, cheers, guys. Uh, and for the girls, amen to that. So a lot of people saying hello back and forth. Uh, Berman said to Blake, what is up, the champion? Oh, don't start calling him that. He's going to get it too big in his head. Don't keep calling him that. <laughs> Richie says, hey, to Blake. Uh, Simon says, Rod, I see a lot of Venice posters, but only three I recognize. Guinness, Sierra Nevada, and wait for it, Great Lakes. Are you from Ohio? I'm actually in the Cincinnati area, but I'm over on the Kentucky side. So technically we are considered Cincinnati Metro, but I am in Northern Kentucky. But yeah, so you've got the uh, Great Lakes of Sierra Nevada, the Guinness. Um, I don't think I have any other, you can't really see if I slide this way. I got a bunch of beer stickers up there with the beer glasses and stuff as well. Um, I've got on the other side here, I got Connecticut Valley, uh, Dogfish Head, uh, Lagunitas is somewhere back there too. I was in the back corner up up there above the hats. So I've got a few things. I actually have some stuff I can't even put on the walls right now because I just have too much of it. So what are you going to do? <laughs> Left says, not sure what happened here, Cuff and stuff, but uh, with you, you know, my bad. So uh, another day trying to be as awesome as the chat. Cheers, man, Blake says. <laughs> If anyone knows Jimmy C and Friends, he has a video on it as well. Just saying. Okay. Uh, Great Lakes Brewery 216. <laughs> and also see the company that makes 60 Minute. Miss that. Yeah, so Dogfish Head is up there too. I'm also a, uh, not a heavy. I, I read a lot of comic books when I was young, but I am still kind of a comic book fan. So these are like the Ghost Rider here. And then uh, Black Panther, Green Lantern up top. Down below the Black Panther is actually one from the new Joker movie that Joaquin Phoenix I played in. 
So I like a little bit of comic book action, which I just heard some pretty good stuff for anybody that's a comic book fan out there that they're actually showing, they were talking about MCU 4 and 5 coming out and they got some crazy stuff upcoming on some of the Marvel stuff. So it's going to be pretty awesome. I mean, the next like five, six years as a Marvel or comic book geek, you're going to see a lot of good stuff come your way. Boom shakalaka boom, that's the girl, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Whitey Ford, right? Yeah, I mean, that was Everlast there too. Went for the girl, yes, sir, Lep. Uh, and then Monica said, I'll be back. And Jeremy said, I want to have eight screens on my computer set up, lol. <laughs> well, you know, if I could have like my Northern report and be reaching all around, that would be the awesome thing to have. But three screens was pretty nice. Um, and, you know, when I, I got used to the three, I actually had thought in my head, you know, maybe I could do four. Because I had a laptop in the middle, and then each side I had that. But I also had an outlet from the laptop that occasionally I will put into my uh, HDTV to make that a computer screen. And that would just allow me to have everything. Because, you know, when you're on one screen, you're always opening and closing stuff. You never have to do that when you have more computer options, which makes it nice. So, that was uh, something that I did enjoy at the time. Um, and for the grill said, thanks, Rod. Oh, my pleasure, my friend. Definitely want to get everybody all connected here. Uh, you bring the brew. I got the cue. I like that. Lap. I should put that on a t-shirt. You should put that on a t-shirt. You bring the brew. I got the cue. And I'll put on mine. You bring the cue. I got the brew. We need to talk. We need to talk. Because that, that could be something to work out right there. Uh, in for the grill. Cool guy. Subscribe to him if you haven't already. Definitely. Uh, do, 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 do. See, I'm on my OBS, and if you scroll a little too far, it kind of jumps me. That's why I'm scrolling back down now. And Eclipse is in the house. What is going on, Steven? It's been a while, my friend. He's out there in Washington. Eclipse Brewing. So, if you guys want to know about brewing beer and see some of the behind the scenes stuff and how it can be done and hear about some good things. Make sure you guys check out Eclipse Brewing as well. He's out there in Washington. Great channel. He's actually sent me some of the home brews. I can tell you his home brews are right there. He could be selling those commercially. That's how good his home brews are. So check out Eclipse Brewing as well. He definitely gets it done. Uh, Jeremy says, in for the grill. Cool guy. Subscribe to him if you have. Yeah. Awesome. Lamp. Um, in for the grill. Said, Thanks a bunch, JV. Uh, Rajay, I have to say, I've never watched your channel without learning something about the art of beer. <laughs> well, thanks, Cuff and stuff. That's what it's all about. It's all about trying to share some knowledge. I like to do it in a fun way. You know, when I created the channel, my whole goal was to create something that could educate people about beer, but do it in a fun way where it's like kind of, kind of like a beer entertainment type thing. So hopefully I've accomplished that and you guys are all enjoying it, which I think you guys are. <laughs> Simon says, I love American Pickers. I, I got hooked into it like a couple years ago and I enjoy like seeing these guys going and do stuff. And I used to go to estate sales and I would find deals and I would sell on eBay like years ago. I once found a book that was an old... Um, I forgot which book it was, but it was like an old, like, you know, hardcover written book. And I got it for the 50 cent in a yard sale. Ended up selling it to a guy that wanted it from Australia for like $200. Heck of a markup. I once found like a Yogi Bear autograph thing in the back of a closet that people didn't even know they actually had. Um, I ended up finding some other stuff that ended up being nice. Some stuff I just kept because it was just a nice deal to get on some things. But it's kind of interesting. And one of the coolest things I found when I went to an estate sale, we went to a house that was over here in Covington, Kentucky, that actually had a hidden room where they were selling merchandise out of the back. So they ran a convenience store as kind of a hidden room out of their house. So they weren't paying taxes and all that kind of stuff. And you had the old price list, and this was like from the 50s or whatever. You would see like a pack of Wrigley's gum or loaf of bread or those kind of stuff there. And it was just like this little thing where you had to push a button and then opened up a secret door. I'd never been in a house with a secret door until that point. That was pretty freaking cool. Um, that is the thin guy and the fat guy, right? Good way to call it, Simon. It is a, the thin and the fat guy. <laughs> and they climb, like, over everything in that show. But, yeah. Uh, my wife added HBO, so watch the movie earlier. As with HBO, I am set until next month. Yeah, HBO has um, some pretty good stuff. I started watching the new Perry Mason series. So I like the guy that plays the uh, lead role from when he did The Americans. It's different. It's good because it's like it's a young Perry Mason and stuff he's caught up with. And with HBO, they always throw a twist your way. But um, a decent one to actually check out there. I watched Westworld on HBO. I watched 
um, some of the other stuff they come out with. So right now it's kind of just starting to pick back up for me because I three shows I kind of watch right now are Yellowstone, Nosferatu, and um, uh, the Perry Mason I just started. But I, like I watch Walking Dead when it comes back, but I don't watch Fear the Walking Dead. I, not, there's too many Walking Dead shows at this point. Um, uh, I just love the beer guys there, so chill. Everybody should definitely be chill. Uh, thanks, Slap. Blake, after Ohio State wins the championship, I will be the, uh, the chef champion. <laughs> if the Buckeyes can do it, right? <laughs> if there's a football season, even, because right now we don't even know if it's going to be a football season, the way things are kind of stacked up right now. I heard Ohio State, they want the players to sign a waiver in case they picked up the corona. It's like, why would I sign a waiver for that? Like, you know, I'd rather not just come back and play at this point. Uh, Eclipse said, hey to Jeremy as well. Cheers, Eclipse. Hope you're doing great. And Cuff and Stuff, great to see you, bro, from Blake. Everybody's connecting, which is nice. Brewing Q or Q and Brew, great idea. I think it is too, Bourbon. I think that's an, an awesome idea. Um, speaking of whiskey... One of the festivals that we usually have each year, which obviously we're not having this year, is a bourbon, bacon, and beer festival that they have here in Kentucky, which is freaking awesome. Um, get some good bacon, some good bourbon, and some damn good beer. And uh, yeah, you don't want to go to the doctor the next day because you probably got like your diabetes up. Your sugar's probably a little high because it's uh, a lot of stuff happening there. But uh, the food is so freaking good. You just pretty much just chill and relax and just enjoy yourself uh let me see here uh lep said to blake do you see my last comment hello lep hey blake life is good jeremy thanks go bucks uh duh, 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 duh. i think he's ignoring me jv <laughs> blake you know blake may have dropped out at times because the internet is kind of sketchy at points so blake would never ignore anybody Watch out for the secret door houses, Rajay. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a neat little thing, though. Like, you know, seeing, like, because you're, you're walking back into kind of history at that time. Like, you know, where people were, were running this little business out of their house because obviously they needed the income. But it was, like, you know, kind of a sketchy situation. And for those of you that don't know some of the history around Cincinnati, over in Newport, Kentucky, it used to be where they used to get a lot of the mob coming through. So Cincinnati used to have a lot of things that would run through the Ohio River and down through this area in the days of the mob days back in the 60s. And it wasn't uncommon for, like, for Frank Sinatra to play Newport, Kentucky at some of the clubs they had over there. So they got a little bit of a tie to some criminal elements throughout that area. Uh, Jeremy said, I think so too, Left. So he thinks Blake is ignoring you. Uh, let me see. Read Chill. What is that? We'll read it. What's the read chill? I think I might have missed something there. I uh, see you left. We shall see, LOL. <laughs> so Blake does see you there. Um, and Hans wants roast chicken. I want it now, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> you got a taste for roasted chicken? <laughs> Lev said, hit that bell, Eclipse, my bad. Uh, what did you rate the platform Orange March that I missed the beginning? I didn't give a rating on this one. I, I, I go back and forth on giving ratings just because I actually did a video about ratings a few years back when I started the channel. They all mean th different things to different people. And unless you sit there with a sheet on why you gave something, it's kind of up in the air. But for me, an easy way that I do it because of Untapped, like... To give something a five would be perfect. To give a four would be very good, very little flaw. A three is actually a good score for me. Uh, decent, it meets a lot of stuff, but it's not going to, you know, do anything too much to get you over the level. So for this one, I'd give this one like a, a three and a half out of five. It's decent. You can sit back, you can enjoy it, but for them to say this is like a slushy style sour, you put this versus. 450 North, like I mentioned earlier, or you put it against um, other half or some other places out there, it doesn't really stack up as strongly against them. Not a bad beer, it just doesn't have all of that to fit the criteria you would like to see for that style, at least in my opinion. And the one thing about beer drinking, we just get the more different beers we drink, the more our universe grows, right? So we're always growing. So a beer that's good today may not be as good 
next year. Or it may be better because then you realize other people can't make beers that good. It's always an ever-growing cha thing changing. Hey, what is going on, Justin, over on Facebook? Cheers, my friends. You can see you on YouTube and on here, too. Yeah, that's the multi-streaming universe, my friend. Good to see you. It's been a while. Hopefully, you're doing well up there and the workouts are going good, too. But, yeah, I'm actually streaming over here on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Twitch. Uh, I think I'm on DLive as well. And then there's another one that has me streaming, too, Smashcast. So... Yeah, I kind of dig in this setup that you can actually do now, and uh, it's like cloning yourself, right? You're on different spots at different times, so everybody has different people that can check it out. Uh, bacon, bourbon, and beer, those are my three favorite things. I would eat myself sober with bacon. <laughs> well, you could throw another B in there, too, and, you know, <laughs> that'd be good, too. <laughs> yeah, BBB, sweet. Yeah, it's a, it's a great time. Um, went there a few years ago. And one of the things they had was some type of burger with bacon on it, and the buns were glazed donuts. And I'm like, I am not getting one of those. And I just put it with a couple friends that were there, just had like a piece of it. The piece I had blew my mind how good it freaking was. But it was like a small piece, and at that point, I felt like Wilford Brimley could have tapped me on the shoulder and say, "Hey, what are you doing? You know, diabetes, you know." But they have some great different stuff that they do with the bacon and the, the thing. I have beer with bacon in it. Um, having some nice candy bacon with a little bit of whiskey. Nice little pairing as well that you can do there. It's a good time for sure. Uh, let me see here. Is that the Louisiana internet they got up there? <laughs> up in Arkansas? <laughs> oh. The Jeremy said, okay, cool. Um, hey, what is going on? We got John in the house of Hillbilly Select Reviews. What is going on, my friend? It's been a little bit of time. John is actually just south of me down in the Louisville area. If you haven't checked out Hillbilly Select Reviews, another great channel. Another great channel to check out. He does beer. He does coffee. And he also does wine. And I think he may have done some spirits on your channel as well. So he's always got some good things happening. Nice and laid back, usually like in his little backyard type setting. It's really some good things to really sit back and learn about. So, like I said, if you're a coffee fan, he goes through different coffees. If you're a whiskey or spirit type fan, he does that at times. He does a lot of good stuff with the wine. I can tell you that if you want to get your wine game up, you can check him out there. And, of course, he also does the beer as well. So make sure you show him some love, too. And I see a lot of friends in here. Hello, everybody, he says. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's the whole thing, the whole social thing. We're all friends. We're all moving around. And it's funny when you start recognizing people like, hey, what are you doing over here? Like, you know, I've been here for a while. Where have you been at? <laughs> bourbon says, with bourbon, it is about the legs. Oils coated in indicative of tongue coat and the finish. Nose and notes, smell and taste are closely related. But the most important, the taste, looking for complexity. Well, there you go. That definitely works. Um... And for the girl said, did I hear bacon? Yeah, yeah, this, it's a great festival. <laughs> and Jeremy says cheers, and Richie also the hillbilly. Uh, and for the girl, we have a signature donut made out of Canadian maple topped with bacon. I'm not hating on that. We got one of our donut shops here. They do a bacon maple glazed donut as well. Freaking off the chain. Um, I'm a huge Dunkin' Donuts fan, and this is like one of our craft kind of bakeries that does it. Dunkin' Donuts can't touch it at all. It's just so damn good. Uh, it's the bomb. There was once a bourbon bar I went when they served candy bacon on a board. This was extremely thick slabs of bacon melts in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. So we have places around here in Kentucky that will do some stuff with the candy bacon. I'm a fan of candy bacon. I'm just going to tell you. I love bacon, but I really love candy bacon. <laughs> There's no bad time to have some candy bacon. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, Jeremy said just also join the sub to Hillbilly. Nice. And Todd said, hey, Hillbilly. And uh, Hillbilly said, thanks to Jeremy as well. Uh, Raina says, seen a travel video. They were eating a burger with bacon and pineapple. Once I seen pineapple, I was like, got to do this. <laughs> and then I thought, sriracha sauce as well, just around the corner. Nothing wrong with the experiment in there, right? So <laughs> I got to say, I've never had pineapple on a burger. And I'm a huge, huge burger fan. I've tried all kinds of different burgers. Never thought about the pineapple. So that might be something interesting to actually, actually check out as well. But 
I can't believe it. I love all the the talking tonight. I've got through all the, the uh, comments there. Don't mean you got to go back and race out anymore. I'm just saying. I got through them all. Got caught up finally. Take a sip. So, I actually, the other thing I was going to do, I was going to do an unpacking because I had a new shirt design that I actually got set up. And uh, what is going on, Michelle Sparkle Supreme Queen in the house? Cheers. Another good channel. Check out there as well. And... I was waiting for the shirt to come in. Well, the shirt wasn't coming in because the Corona has shut down kind of the place it was coming from for a little bit. And so I'm like, I was gonna cancel the order. Like, well, don't cancel. We're gonna go ahead, we'll send you the shirt and we'll give you a credit for the shirt. So you'll basically get the shirt for free. And then you can use that for something else on the line. We'll put a credit on your account. So I'm like, works for me. So they sent me the shirt and they gave me a credit. So I got the shirt for free essentially. So I can use that money for something else now. So I'm like, win-win, baby. Uh, what is the WVU College beer? For example, Texan AM is Lone Star and Shiner. Well, <laughs> when I went back to WVU, I graduated WVU back in 91. At the time I was in school, you had your people that came in from Pittsburgh, because Pittsburgh was a good amount of the school. So Roller Rock was popular. We also had a lot of people that would drink Milwaukee's Best, because Milwaukee's Best was cheap. We also had Red Dog that people would actually drink there as well. Um, sometimes you would get some of the malt liquor, like so occasionally you'll find some Mickeys around as well. But the big thing at WVU was Everclear. We did a lot of parties where Everclear and Punch were the star of the show type situation. So I, when I moved to this area, I tried to buy alcohol in Ohio and I asked for Everclear and they said, we, can, we don't sell Everclear. I'm like, what do you mean you don't sell Everclear? They said, well, it's too strong of alcohol. I said, how's alcohol too strong? It's supposed to be strong. It's alcohol. But we sell it in Kentucky, so I end up picking it up over here. But, um, yeah, so beer-wise, I would say Milwaukee's best. Oh, also Miller, Miller Genuine Draft was real popular back in the late 80s, early 90s as well. Um those were ones I've seen most of the time that were around. Um, and then we had a lot of different stuff that was in kegs at the keg parties and things like that. But when I was back in school, we'd have like um, 25 cent draft nights at the local bars. It'd be 25 cent drafts or we'd have like five hour drinking drowns. Five dollars, you were set for the night, whatever you were drinking, you know, it was all bottom shelf liquor they were giving you, but who cares, it was five dollars. But the uh, 25 cent draft nights, you would definitely get crushed like on $3 or something because they would get like 12 ounce beer for it. So those were the days when that when the hell's before responsibility crept into the picture for a lot of places. <laughs> oh, let me see here. Um, Blake says, Simon here in Arkansas is woo pig shit. <laughs> uh, Sparkles, I love you, Blake and Jeremy. My son made a Hawaiian burger. He made a jalapeno and spam spread jam and had a grilled pineapple on it it was really good i'm i've just never been able to get into the spam i've never been able to get into the spam i don't know maybe it's like fried bologna maybe i gotta give it a second chance well i never gave it a first chance with fried bologna but maybe now that i've accepted fried bologna in my life maybe i should try some spam as well uh, let me see here uh, let me go back up here LOL, Everclear, right? Yeah, there's a song about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mickey's, yeah. Lep loves the Mickey's. Uh, Rajay, the Purple Passion type of guy. Ooh, that was high school years when we did that stuff. And it was like, you thought you upgraded. You know, you went to high school, then you went to college, and then you got like Boone's Farms and the other, the next level of shit. So, <laughs> hey, Rod, do you know who Caribou Lou is? I've heard that, I've heard that name before for Caribou Lou. Um... But offhand, it's like slipping my head. Uh, MGD in for the grill. Yeah, MGD was popular back then. Um, one of our other buddies, uh, Chris from uh, Off the Tent, if you ever check out his channel, great channel for beer as well, Off the Tent. He actually uh, loves MGD. He can't get enough on enough his hands on it for some reason. He just, every time you see him, he's drinking one of those. So, uh, Simon said, LL, you put this in perspective. I do remember a dollar black label. Yeah. <laughs> They stopped selling Old Milwaukee in Florida a few years ago. I don't know why. You know what the funny thing is about Old Milwaukee? I can remember in the late 80s and 90s, 
they do these blind tests, right? You remember the old like Pepsi versus Coke and they would do it with beer and stuff. And blind test and blind taste test, old Milwaukee was actually one that won a lot of the time. And like when people went fishing, they loved to have old Milwaukee. So but like it's like Celine Dion, like you don't want anybody to know you were actually listening to Celine Dion, but you might like Celine Dion, so you would play it with the windows up in the car where nobody could hear it, right? So People didn't want to guess no to people were old Milwaukee. Probably why we got the koozie so you can hide the label of your can. Um, it was a good brew. I, I think, I wonder if I can still get old Milwaukee. I'm thinking at one of my stores they may have it. Uh, fry Spam Rod, that's all I'm saying. Oh, now you want me to try to Fry Spam Todd. That's what you're getting to, right? <laughs> yeah, not picture a Spam on a burger, but I would try it, Raining says. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, you know, it's with the pineapple. I mean, Hawaiians, they love Spam, so... They put a lot of pineapple and stuff, so it probably is a nice pairing there. 151 rum, pineapple juice, and Malibu. Nice. Old school, we used to do like the Dr. Peppers back in the day, too. Um, bars don't like those as much now because they can kind of set fires. But <laughs> but we used to love drinking some Dr. Peppers. Uh, if you put the word best after the name, it probably is not. Probably not, right? <laughs> it's like when somebody says, with all due respect, you know something's going to happen where it's not going to be respected of you. Uh, let when the black sun ties, yes, slept. <laughs> LOL, bourbon, yeah, yeah, with yes, that's kind of that, that whole situation. But here's one of the packages here. So let me see what they actually sent because I can't remember what they ordered. What I ordered, I remember I, I know what one thing is, but I don't know what the other thing is they sent me. So, so this is actually, oh, this is the new shirt. So, this is the new one that's going up to the store. And if you guys can see it here, it basically says coast to coast, beer in the most. It's got the logo on there. And then on the back, it's got the, the YouTube subscribe. So just another t-shirt that I'm be rocking and throwing up on the store as well. Uh, the Spam was finally diced and sauteed with jalapenos and then made into a jam. It wasn't a slab of, oh, okay, well that sounds better. Like you just spread it on through the jam. That sounds interesting. Yeah, it's like saying, don't take this the wrong way, right? <laughs> I was like, which way you want me to take it? So let's see what this other one is here. Oh, shit. Well, they sent it to me twice. They sent me two of them. So they sent me two of them. Same thing on the front and the back. They sent me two, and I got a credit. So I didn't pay for either of these. Hashtag winning. <laughs> Mark that down as another Raj J deal. <laughs> Two free shirts and I got my money back. See, that's how I work, people. <laughs> What's going on? John Pierre in the house. It's been a while, my friend. Cheers, buddy. John H. Pierre. If you guys haven't checked out John, check him out as well. Or Jean, Jean H. Pierre. Um, he actually does some beer reviews on his channel. He's been doing it for a while too. So great guy Check him out. See what he's doing. He does a lot of different stuff and he'll do Beer he'll do malt liquor. He'll do all kinds of different things. So good guy. It's great to see you my friend Hopefully things are going well for you down in Alabama uh, Let me see here and the Rod J deals continue. I mean, it just happens. It just happens. Uh, if you get five more, it means they want you to wear it every day, right? If they send them for free, I'll wear them every day. I'll be like, NASCAR, go ahead, throw a logo on me. I don't care. It's free. I'm winning. As Blake says, hashtag winning. <laughs> and then Blake says, cheers to Johnny Pierre. Perfect one shirt for beer, one shirt for barbecue. Exactly. Just hanging out watching you. Awesome. Well, hopefully uh, you're off to a great start today as well, my friend. Uh, in for the grill, agree, bro. I know we were fam, Blake, and enjoying the show. And okay, I get a slight flavor of spam. Nice and spicy. Sounds interesting. That's what I said, Rainy. So now if you're going to put it like kind of a little spread like that, that does sound interesting. Blake says to let, yes, sir. And then in for the grill, smile with 100. Yeah. So, yeah, but I tell you what, I'm thinking of the other one from Lep because I think I'm going to make a shirt for left so left we may we may need to connect up there but uh i like to bring the brew and bring the cue and vice versa that's a good idea for sure Ugh. but yeah but uh simon says favorite beer all time any kind of beer tell us that's always a hard question for a beer person 
to answer. It's kind of like, you know, how do you make it down to just one, so to speak? I will tell you that as far as styles, my favorite styles are usually Belgian ales. And then after that, it's usually stouts and then into IPAs. For the longest time, um, Gudendrat 9000 was my favorite beer. I've kind of kind of retired that at this point. Um, I will say domestically, one of my favorite, well, the favorite Imperial Porter that I like is actually the Ballast Point Victory at Sea, their Imperial Porter. I really enjoy that one. As far as a stout, I think my highest rated is still the, the Bourbon County from Goose Island. It's still one of my top stouts to actually have out there. Um, but you know, like I said, with us beer drinking, you know, our universe is always expanding and I could pick up a beer tomorrow and that could be all of a sudden a great beer too. But those are like some of the beers I would have up there. I'm down front and back logos and phrase. So there you go. That would work. Um, Rain says cheers. Bourbon said beer barbecue and bourbon triple B. We could get sued by Guy Fieri and get famous. That would work. There's no bad. There's no bad idea for marketing, right? <laughs> well, he's got triple G, and he has triple D because he's that guy groceries and games that he does triple G off of. So, right now the B is still available. The B is out there. Favorite kind of beer is cold beer. <laughs> well, cold beer is good, depending on what kind of beer it is. You know, depending on. The style, some beers you want colder than others. Obviously, if you're drinking like one of the lagers, um, you definitely want to hit those a little more colder. Um, if you're thinking of something like your, you know, your Buds, your Miller's Record, some of your macro, some of your 40s, stuff like that and everything. But, you know, you get like something like a nice IPA or pre style, you want to let that warm up a little bit to bring out some of the flavors and the taste of it too. So, all about knowing a different beer, the different styles and, you know, when we were younger and we drank, we would drink it to kind of chug it. But now as we're older, it's more of a social type thing. You know, as you go through drinking a beer over a period of time, just notice how the flavor changes on it and stuff. And then you might find out, you know, it might be better. Like some beers I take them, I sit them out for 20 minutes before I crack them open. Or I pour them and let them sit there for maybe five minutes to kind of let them get into the air a little bit. So just different ways to actually enjoy the beer. But it's whatever works for your palate. Always follow your palate. That's what matters the most. Some people don't like certain beers, and it's like, that's fine. I mean, other people do like them. You know, it's all about what you like. And remember, never be that beer snob to slam somebody over the beer they're drinking. You can have fun with them, just don't slam them. <laughs> uh, talk about chasing clown bourbon. <laughs> uh, we need to chat after this live, right? Yeah, we can definitely uh, do that. I probably won't be able to chat tonight, but probably tomorrow I should be around. Uh, I'm glad to get some other stuff done before I uh, hit the bed later on and get up for early in the work. This week, it's good. It's a short work week. I only got to work through Wednesday. Took Thursday off ahead of the July 4th holiday. So I look forward to uh, to a nice short work week. <laughs> I feel like, I guess maybe it's 2020 wearing me down, but it feels like every week it's like less that you want to be in there working on stuff for real. It's like, I just want to. I don't even want to go to work right now. There's too much shit happening. Anytime you turn on the TV or you do something, it's like, I just want to chill. Just sit here and vest. That's why this last weekend, I pretty much just vest around playing some video games, kind of clearing my head on stuff. And let's see here. Uh, and for the girls that damn right, you just schooled me. Thanks, bro. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm, you know, what I might do, I got a, um, I got a chart, and I'll see if it'll fit. But on my community tab, I can put stuff on there as well. And I, one of my charts that I have is a temperature chart about how you drink beer at different styles. So if I can find out, I'll put that on there if you want to check that out as well. Nina's in the house. What is going on? Cheers, Nina. Have I ever had the Six Point Bengali Ale? Yes, yes, I have. In fact, it's funny you mentioned that beer because I was going through updating some of my older videos. And one of the videos I, I was updating was information on the Bengali. I did a Bengali review a few years ago here in the channel. But uh, I do like the Bengali. I like Six Point. Resin is one of my favorite ones from them. Six Point makes some decent brews up there in New York. So always look forward to trying to check out some of the stuff there. And if you guys haven't checked out Nina Yorty, make sure you check out Nina. 
Nina is often over on uh, Beer Chuck's channel now when we play like what the ABV. She's been in there a few times, I believe. And she's doing some beer stuff as well. So make sure you check out Nina. Show her some love there too. Uh, Bourbon said, if you, have, if you have slammed somebody, I'm drinking Coors Light. <laughs> it's the easy going, no headache slugger with Blue Mountains and Rocky Mountain Spring. But yeah, it's nothing wrong with Coors Light. It's, uh, you know, you always like have fun. Like, you know, everybody talks about, you know, Coors Light kind of being like that just off a of water type beer or whatever. But it's okay. It has its moments. You know, I used to play in a golf tournament every uh, twice a year, um, every few years. And the place that had it would be a bar. And so when you got done golfing, you came back and it was free Bud Light on keg. I didn't care. It was free Bud Light. So I, I sat there and I drank the Bud Light. You know, it wasn't like I might occasionally get another thing off of one of the other kegs. But if it's free and it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, you know. Never be that snob. Nobody ever wants to be that snob out there, right? So you can always teach people or talk to people and maybe explain stuff, but, you know, have people try different things. You know, if somebody's drinking, like I tell people, if somebody, you want to teach them to get into craft beer, you got to find out what they actually like. If they end up liking something like a macro lager, maybe you try to get them to try like a golden ale or you try to get them to try like a blonde ale. Those are great styles for someone that's getting into craft beer that's used to a macro lager type taste. You gotta just find out and get the palate. My wife used to not be a big fan of drinking a lot of beers. Once I found out what she actually liked and went through it, she's a huge fan of whip beers now. Whip beers and a lot of the uh, the Euro type lagers she really enjoys, but she had to experiment through stuff. She likes some sours as well. Um, so for her saying at one point not liking beer to now she has different styles. We go out, she drinks beer when we go out and it's a matter of just finding that one that meets her criteria. So. There's always a beer, in my opinion, out there for everyone, for the most part. Uh, let me see here. Scroll back up. Uh, and for the grill, bourbon. That's my drink. Colorado Kool-Aid. I love my Coors Light. There you go. <laughs> uh, cheers, Rod. I figured you tried it. Yeah, definitely. I need to do some more six-point beers. I don't know. Six-point always has that weird kind of skinny type can. I don't know how they got that one. But it's like patented for them on their stuff. It's interesting. Uh, here's a love the background music. Well, thanks. Yeah, this is a uh, one of the stations I often use for streams. If you're ever looking for music for your YouTube channel and you don't have to pay anything, you don't want to worry about copyright strikes, there's this channel called MU Free Music for YouTube, and you can actually use them on your background stuff and just put them a note in the description. They don't ever hit you up for anything like that. You don't get penalized. There's no strikes or anything like that. And they have like kind of some different ambiance type things you can use. So I would definitely say check them out. Uh, any plans for the fourth? Just chilling. Yeah, I'm pretty much laying low here. Here's the funny thing for the fourth. I'm kind of interested to see what they're going to do because the name of the town I'm in is called Independence. So if there's any holiday that fits this town, <laughs> there's no more than Independence Day. Usually they have like two fireworks shows, they do parades, they do all kinds of stuff, but they're kind of trying to limit who's doing what out there. So it'll be interesting to see how it comes across out here. If people will kind of do, they might do a fireworks show, which I can actually see from my back porch with not having people there, but just do a show and the people can be maybe in our cars or whatever it may be, how they're gonna handle it. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see. But outside of that, pretty much chilling. Um, probably have beers. I got a couple cigars here. I might do a cigar video this weekend if it's not too freaking humid outside because it's been humid like crazy. Nobody wants to smoke a cigar in the steam, in the steam sauna. So hopefully I'll crack a cigar open this weekend. Talk about some beer outside from the back deck. I like doing the videos from out there as well. So stay tuned for that there. Uh, but a lot of people are used to going to like picnics, barbecues, all kinds of stuff. Anybody doing that this year? I mean, are you kind of like just laying back because of the whole fear of, I, was, I, won't, I won't say the fear of the corona, but the the possibility of the corona thing there. Like, like I said earlier, nobody wants to bring that home to grandma, so some people are just being extra safe. So um, it'll be kind of interesting to see what people do. But if, are you guys planning to do anything for this weekend? Uh, let me see. Free beer, yay. <laughs> right? Nothing wrong with free beer. <laughs> oh, we see. Bounty says, hey, Nina, I don't have newbie luck on what the ABV. <laughs> you just keep plugging away at it. You'll get it at some point. 
Um, just remember on what the ABV Bourbon, I mean, uh, Bourbon, uh, Bumpy has had the worst score, but he's also had one of the higher scores, too. So, <laughs> and he's leading the championships right now. So, anybody can flip it at any point. Uh, da, da, da. Let me see here. Let's see, signs of Bourbon Bounty. I am drinking Bud Light, so on the same page. Yeah, there you go. It's all about kicking back and just relaxing and chill. Not everybody wants a heavy beer all the time either, right? So having that light beer, just something to give you that feel and get it tuned up for. Um, be cool, Rod. Yeah, I'll get that on there for you and for the grill as well. I'll put that up there. And I don't use the community tab enough on my things. I need to use it for more, but that'd be a great thing to place out there as well. Um, cheers, I would clink clans to that. <laughs> clink cans, yeah. Uh, can't win them all bourbon, right, Nina? Yeah, so Nina's been on there competing. Uh, I can't win any of them on that panel, LOL. <laughs> can't go wrong with a good lager. Yeah, I mean, and it's funny because lager, I'm more of an ale person than a lager, although I found the lager styles I prefer, right? So I like a good Bach, which is a lager. I like a Baltic Porter. That's a lager. Um, they're not all just like... You know what you think of like some of the adjunct type loggers there's different ones in there so the more you have that knowledge about it, i just want people to not just keep saying what well, do you like lager or pilsner pilsner is a lager that's that's the subset of the lager so don't think pilsner or lagers are two different things pilsner is a lager already um left says let's all get drunk <laughs> and even for the girls i already got a head start left rip to puff puff pass so there you go <laughs> So the party's already going on there. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I was trying to find a Polish lager, Zuber, not available via Total Wines and more. Anyhow, well, Simon, I don't know if you have the Untapped app, but it's Untapped, U-N-T-A-P-P-D. If you have that on your phone, you can actually, and you can do it on the internet as well, but you can search for beer and you can put the name of the beer and it'll search for locations near you and you can do up to like, I don't know, like a hundred mile radius or something. So that's a good app. And if anybody, anybody that sells the beers in your area are part of that program, like here where I'm at, it'll tell you what stores to go to and you give them a call. They still have it. You'll be in good shape. But I'd had the, uh, Swy the Swy Tech, I think it was that I did a couple of their, their Polish beers. One I really liked. The other one was like a raspberry offers and it wasn't as good as the other one. It was still decent, but, um, I want to find more Polish beers just because one of the other channels I watch, Real L Craft, he actually last year, the year before last, was over in Poland talking about the explosion of the craft beer scene. So I, I will occasionally pick up some craft beers as well from over in the Polish area. I have one place that really does well at getting them in. Light beer or heavy barbecue? I made my choice. <laughs> Hashtag rip. <laughs> in for the grill, pop up. <laughs> Pro tip, if you don't start in the morning, you can't drink all day. True, true. Uh, Ty said, got to run. Cheers, Ron. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Ty. Good seeing you, brother, as well. And uh, definitely connect. We got to play some more Call of Duty out there as well. Um, in for the grill. We have our candy today on Wednesday. I got spares of brisket, some chicken beans, a bunch of slides, three or four family members. And probably give out one of the rest to our closest neighbors. Well, very nice. So you got a nice little setup going. Awesome. Uh, Left it later, Todd. And Vermin said, take it easy to Todd as well. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hashtag Cleveland Polish. Left's on the hashtag kick tonight, people. <laughs> Mrs. Left is Polish. <laughs> Great tip on Untapped. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, definitely. That's, a, that's kind of one of the apps I mainly use to check out some stuff. And... I would say if you see stuff on there with the ratings, don't worry too much about the ratings unless something is kind of really, really bad. Like there's some people that rate stuff, like I said, weird, depending on what your structure may be. But there's some people that just don't know beer. They're like, you know, I'll, I'll see something on there and it'll say it's like too chocolatey or something like that. And it'll be a stout. And it's like, uh, it's supposed to be chocolatey. Like, what are you talking about? Like, some of the things you'll see sometimes that people put on there. But as far as getting information about the beers, that's usually pretty good. Uh, John Pierce, any good lakes in West Virginia, Ohio, or Kentucky to swim in? Well, 
when I went to school at Morgantown, one of our lakes there was Cheat Lake that a lot of people in that area, uh, Northern and West Virginia would go to. Here we have Lake Cumberland that people go to in Kentucky. Obviously, if you're in Ohio, you have the Great Lakes, right? So up like where Lep is outside Cleveland. So yeah, there's a few lakes that are around. <laughs> Toledo, Toledo is Polish. So there's a big Polish influx in Toledo then. Yeah, you know that there is because um, one of my friends, he used to go up to, uh, and he was Polish. He, uh, oh, what's that place in Northern Ohio they used to go to? It was one of the, another place where they do like resort stuff. I can't remember the name of it now, but he was telling me up there how, how much of the Polish area it was as well. Uh, chicken thighs or Cornish hands? Are you asking like which one to prefer between chicken thighs? Actually, I haven't had a Cornish hen in a long time, which wouldn't be bad. But as far as like chicken thighs, chicken thighs wouldn't be bad either. I'm definitely more of a leg or thigh person as it comes to chicken. I'm not a big fan of the breasts on chicken. I just never have been. I feel like it's just, I don't know, I'm more of the, the leg and the uh, the thighs. Well, the, the drumstick and the thigh, because they're both the leg. Our daughter is in Toledo. They just have the most flavor. Yeah, I agree. Big polka fest in Toledo. Yeah, thighs are easy to cook also. Lake, hashtag Lake Erie, right? I just realized I had not subbed, Nina. It has been rectified. Nice, very good. And John's in a place to hang out by the water with food and beer. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice little place to get away to now if you can find a spot like that. I mean, that's not a bad idea at all. You know, one of the places that a lot of people from this area go down to is like Gatlinburg in Tennessee for like cabins. You go down there, you get a cabin, they got the hot tubs and all that kind of stuff, and you're out in the middle of uh, the woods essentially. You can just kind of kick back and just chill. So probably sooner or later we may do like a trip like that. Or we can also go to some spots in Ohio and do the same thing. And I think there's some in Michigan as well. Nashville hot chicken with thighs. Oh, I do like the Nashville hot. Where do I have the uh, BW3, which I'm not always a huge BW3 fan. I think their wings are kind of weak compared to a lot of other places, especially some of the local spots. But they do have a Nashville hot chicken sandwich that is pretty damn good. I'll give them credit there. If you if you have a BW3 near you and you like Nashville hot and you like chicken sandwiches, I would definitely say check that out. It's a, it's a pretty good one they have. And I, I finally had a Popeye's chicken sandwich um, a couple weeks ago after the whole Popeye crave and stuff. I don't know if it's the right chicken sandwich or not. It's just... My wife had ordered it through Grubhub for us to have dinner one night, and um, it was pretty tasty. It was uh, it was decent. I've had the Chick Fil A sandwiches before. I feel like the the Popeyes might have been a little bit better, but it wasn't like that big of a difference. Like people were kind of comparing out there between the two. I thought they were both decent enough. I mean, the thing you get with the Chick Fil A though is just chicken on the bread with two pickles, but the chicken is juicy enough. You don't really need anything else with it. The Popeyes had some condiments on there, but it's a big piece of chicken. It was pretty decent too, so. <laughs> yeah, right? People go freaking nuts over the Popeyes. <laughs> like when they had the Popeye versus Chick-fil-A, it's like people are ready to come to blows at some points this scene. <laughs> oh, Popeyes is solid, good ingredients, yeah. A sandbar where folks are swimming and hanging out and drinking. That sounds really good, my friend. Before the COVID, I had the Popeye's chicken fully loaded, and it was good. I love the Chick-fil-A, but like you said, Chick-fil-A is not loaded up. Right, it's just the chicken and the pickle. It's almost like they just give it to you like that, and but it still holds. It's still it's a, it's a, still a decent sandwich when you look at it. Um, but if you get some of that Chick-fil-A sauce and you put it on top, that definitely gives it a little bit more of a kick to knock it up a couple notches as well. The Chick-fil-A sauce is pretty good, so... Finally broke down and got the Popeyes. My corner gas station has better chicken. <laughs> hey, our corner, our corner, one of our corner stations, they have a, oh, it's, it's part of a chicken chain. I can't think of the name of it now. Um, and their chicken is actually pretty decent. So I don't know. Maybe sometimes it depends who's cooking the chicken at certain spots too, maybe. So, but I think back in the day, one of my favorite chicken places was the, uh, we used to live up in Columbus, Ohio. I lived there for like a short period of time when I was younger. It was Church's Chicken. Church's, and yes, Sister's Chicken, I think, as well. But Church's Chicken was the one that was really good. But I don't get to see them down here. I don't know if they're still in Ohio or other areas, but they were pretty decent. 
I know occasionally I get a craving for um, Dairy Queen because we have a Dairy Queen near us now too, which is always pretty good. I always like the Dairy Queen sandwiches. Taco Tuesday tomorrow. There you go, Nina. I think tomorrow is actually I'm going to probably make spaghetti tomorrow though. Sometimes I do tacos on Thursday. Um, I've done them on Tuesdays before. It just depends how I feel. My issue with Chick Fil A is the vendors bring in has breakfast with my team when these little bun things I would just eat all the chicken out of the buns I call it pickled chicken <laughs> I've actually had that little one I think you're talking about like at our airport when I had to go fly a lot more a few years ago I would grab Chick-fil-A before we got on there as like kind of a breakfast type thing and it'd be the little three in a box or whatever three buns with a little chicken as part of their breakfast thing so I believe I know what you're talking about Churches grew up in Texas and had it sometimes so crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so Churches done a Texas. Yeah, Churches a White Castle. Yeah, so he let those. <laughs> yeah, so Churches chicken was damn good. Picked up a great sales, Newport Judgment Pilsner can three days ago. Nice. I haven't I haven't heard her I haven't heard of Gray Sale. Hmm. So many different breweries that are out there though. I can't hear about them all. That's why it's always funny when I see the list. So these are the top 50 breweries in the country. Really? So you've been to all, like, almost 7,500 breweries? <laughs> uh, we got Church's Chicken up here. It's awesome. Yeah, Church's is, his, like I said, it's good. <laughs> Better than KFP. Yeah, it is. <laughs> KFP. <laughs> um, but it was kind of like, they didn't have the national presence. But I just remember Church's Chicken standing out. And then... Um, like I said, I think it was Sister's Chicken that stood out when we were in Columbus, but they were all like smaller type chains. Taco Monday with the side of COVID. <laughs> A&W up here makes better chicken than Kentucky Fried Chicken. A&W, we got a few of those places around here, and I do like A&W from time to time as well. Um, I think they A&W is kind of like on a, a level for me, like with Dairy Queen. Like they're kind of like over there, it's kind of that side, like A&W, Dairy Queen. Maybe Long John Silvers or something like that, you know. They don't really get seen like in as much as in the mainstream. They're kind of like a little bit different there. White Castle, 2.30, 3.30 a.m. drive through in an early Saturday morning. Then wake up the next morning on the couch with an empty box of regret. <laughs> yeah, empty White Castle boxes laying around the room like, <laughs> what happened last night? AW is expensive, but those root beers are digging dank. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I said, the last time we went to an A&W, because we have one that we used to pass through when we used to drive down to uh, West Virginia, and they weren't too much different than some of the other retail places. Um, they, I thought they were pretty comparable, but then again, I, I was like so hungry to eat at the time, I just probably just paid for it, didn't even think about it. Uh, A&W sells chicken. Yeah, A&W has some of that as well. It's like... Does Burger King not sell anything? I was like, I went to Burger King a while back, and they had, of course, you know, the burgers, and they had the chicken sandwich, and then it's like they got tacos, and then they got other stuff there, and it's like mozzarella sticks. Like, what is Burger King? Like, Burger King is trying to take on everybody at the same time. Uh, Love says, I make the best tacos. I would believe you, my friend, because I've seen you get down on the Blackstone. So, yeah, you probably do make the best tacos. They make the root beer from scratch every day. A&W gravy is saltier than you know what. Yeah, yeah. Root beer, yum. <laughs> Tell me how to make your tacos. Well, that puts his on the Blackstone, I'm sure, for some of the stuff that he's actually doing. We actually got a new um, Mexican place that's near us. And we ordered tacos from them a few weeks ago. And then this is like actual taco tacos this isn't like the american version like these guys it's like the street tacos you would see and it's got like you know they give you like you, you got your soft tortilla but then it's like it's like nice fresh meat that you have like they did like a pineapple salsa type thing you take the pineapple put it with the salsa blend it together i mean they hooked it up it was really good it was really fresh and that's the one thing i noticed when i we went on vacation a few years ago we went to mexico or dominican republic we went to Jamaica and all the other places have food to me that tastes fresher than what we actually get here. And it's like, what are we doing to our food with all the preservatives? Because it's night and day the difference on what you taste there versus to what we actually go through. Um, but being in Jamaica, having jerk chicken made every day on the beach, sitting back, having a nice drink with it. Oh, that was a good week down there for that. Uh, root beer, yum. Yes, sir, Hans. At least in Canada they do. 
a poutine anyone i do enjoy a nice poutine we have like uh three or four places around cincinnati that does it and one of them is a uh, little brew pop and they do a really good poutine I, in my opinion i'd have to have some of the canadian guys on there with me to really check it out but i think they do a pretty good poutine i get cravings for that once in a while yeah you, yeah if you watch leprechaun tv hans make sure you check out his channel they do the cooking shows on there. Usually Saturday nights they're live, but you know, you've got a lot of good videos out there so you can check it out. You gotta have the right curves for the poutine. It does matter. Curves, yeah, they gotta have the right ones there. But I think that I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this baby up. We actually went longer than I thought we were gonna go, but but it's great because I'm glad everybody wanted to hang out tonight. It was a blast. And I'm glad everybody got to connect with everyone for sure. Um I'm going to go ahead and get out of here so I can get some rest and do some other stuff before I have to head to bed. But, uh, I don't know, maybe tomorrow I might kick it around again. i got to find out what's going on with everything. But uh, Thursday night, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen it yet, Thursday night at 9.15 Eastern, every Thursday night we do the Beer Flow Show. So you can always check out the Beer Flow Show. And it's myself, it's Todd and Eric. It's more or less like a podcast type event that we do pretty much. I mean, we're all on here doing it but we just kind of have a thing there where we kick some things around but uh yeah maybe do another live tomorrow i read it great time so i'm glad you guys all hung out um i gotta get back i know blake just signed in there too said great show cheers everyone smash that like button i gotta get back to my other channels because i know blake's had asked me about it before but i need to do the updates for the hip-hop chronicles i'm like a couple weeks behind so i might might not do a show here tomorrow because i might be updating that channel uh, if you like gaming, I also have the gaming channel, which is Rod J Gaming. So we do a lot of fun over there playing different video games and stuff like that to kind of kick back and have some fun as well. So that being said, thanks for everybody that tuned in. It's nice that everybody got to connect with each other. Appreciate all you guys. Uh, Bourbon says night, Rod J. has been fun. Awesome having you here. Make sure you check out all these guys you connected with in the chat. All great stuff being done. And, you know, together we help each other grow and we have a blast. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks for everybody watching. Look forward to catching you guys soon. Keep drinking those good craft beers. Remember, there's always time 